What's up, Devils? j Dog back again for another video for you, and it's going to be some more answers to goddamn questions, comments. Let's then check out a chip all way every damn video. Got behind as a motherfucker, so here we go. Uh, which one did I leave off on? Okay, yeah, it's going to be on the how to start a record label. Way less comments than the poser one. <laughs> Uh, God's 18 comments, so that's probably about, probably about average for old j Dog, right? Here, let's, man, hey, some of these guys write the motherfucking essays. Yeah, I'll read up, Life Eternal, I'll read it off, it's a longie, but, uh, it's, you know, it's not as long as some of the last videos I'm about. Uh, the Hell's Fan vote would be a cool idea, obviously all the issues you point out would make it almost useless, but it'd be a cool idea just to survey, the, uh, like the subscribers of the newsletter or something. I appreciate the premature, <laughs> primo treatment, bro. <laughs> you got it. Uh, where the fuck, uh, thanks for the answers too. Most of the stuff I needed to know here, so much appreciated. I pressed my own band stuff before, so it sounds like doing that, but with a couple extra steps. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just as long as you get approval from the band. I mean, hell, you might even meet a band that's so cool, they're just like, give me five copies, or I don't care. That we've occasionally had something like that, so they just they just kind of out of loop, don't even give a shit, just put it out, just do whatever. Uh, if you run into that, it'd be the same thing. The only diff, basically, the only other step is, yeah, is uh. It's just giving the copies of the band. Well, maybe, maybe they want cash instead or copies. Um, yeah, I mean, preferably copies, because that way you don't have to front more money. But if you have the money, then that's not a problem either. Yeah, so. Uh, just got to figure out the uh, figure out licensing in my state. Oh, it doesn't work like that, man. You don't got to, yeah, don't comp licensing, when I say that, man, it's nine, time, nine times out of 100, it's a fucking, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a handshake. Or you uh, you could write up, put something in writing, and both of you guys sign it. You don't think it's, fuck your state, man. Yeah, you're, you're overthinking it. Like, like the court system and all this other shit. We've, we've never involved ourselves in that ever, not once. Uh, we have kind of like a template contract where it just says out the agreements, like we own this for X amount of years. This deal was set up and all that, and that that's it. And uh, and then we sign it, and they sign it. It's just, just a case of some legal dispute, scuttlebutt was ever come up. Plus, we, we've never had a. Refer we've been doing this what over twenty years now. We've never once had to refer to it, so it's just kind of a safety net for both in case. But most of it, a lot of some, a lot of our deals are literally like with Nunslaughter. We don't have anything in writing. It's just literally a handshake. Don's a friend, and we just just a handshake. Even when we uh before we're friends, like when we just first met, it was all handshake. Nothing's in writing with Nunslaughter. Uh, there's a few other bands. I'm sure, I think that, well, there's a lot of other bands. Nothing's in writing. Uh, so yeah, no, you know, you're way overthinking it. Just 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 get just get an agreement. As long as this guy that's and the band or it's the label that owns it, just get to an agreement and just and just do it. Whatever they want, just pay them whatever they want, or just come to some type of agreement, just do it. Uh, do you have that Conquer War Cult Supremacy wooden box sent from a few years back? If so, you should throw up. Uh, I do not. Like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge Conquer fan. To me, Conquer Revenge was basically the same shit. For me, uh, I thought they sound really cool, but it was kind of like a seven inch band because I just thought everything, I just thought all the shit all sounded the same. I, I really, I really like the vocals, and I think the music's really aggressive, and and I, I think it's a good sound. But um, the songs just didn't stand out to me at all. So I'm like, I just would like a good four song seven inch, two songs on each side, and I uh, the, wish they did nothing else, and that's it. And that would just so it was a real collectible seven inch, kind of like one of my favorite seven inches of all time. Hell's did uh, by the band War Ripper, Joel Grind side project. It was just awesome. He did four songs. I love it to absolute fucking death. They never did anything else. It's kind of cool. It's just a cult fucking underground classic. So yeah, I didn't need tons of albums by Conquer and stuff like that. But I understand that's some people's favorite band. Hey, that's cool. Uh, some people might say the same about Mortician. I just need a seven. And shit all sounds the same. Hey, I love Mortician. I can tell the song's part, so fair fucking enough. Layla Love or 90. Question in reference to the metal god dethroned. Hellcast episode, unlike Rob Elf Halford. Holy shit, man. That was that was a long time ago. What was that? Five, six, seven years ago? Which older metal artists do you think are actually into metal? <laughs> Has Hell's ever gotten an order from a member of a metal band. Uh, I'll answer the first part. Uh, ever, yeah, actually, um, what's that guy from, uh, uh, Phil from Pantera is actually ordered from us a couple times. Believe that or fucking not. And then, uh, Scott and Mike from Cyanide, they order from us. Um, trying to think if anybody, like, the biggest person would have been Phil. Uh, I'm sure others have. Uh, I saw other people from some labels and shit. I know Renny Jaffe from, uh, uh, Relapse Records. He's, he's ordered from us a few times. Um, bands, I mean, underground bands for sure. Some do. I mean, uh, Danny from Malignancy has ordered from us before, um, and others. But I mean, as far as like big, big bands, like you're probably assuming like Morbid Angel, Deicide, Cannibal Corpse, not that I'm aware of. Um, I think one of the guys, uh, who's the guitar player? I think it's slipping my name is Blas Karath, or how do you pronounce the name? From Immortal, who's on like, um, Sons of Northern Darkness, and I believe Damned in Black. 
I want to say he ordered from us once or twice, like years and years back too. But um, no huge names other than Phil that are standing out. But to answer the uh, uh, <laughs> uh, older metal artists, do you think are actually into metal? I guess I should probably maybe qualify for this from us. I don't know for sure that none of these guys, you know, do. Like I said, I'm sure there are bands that do, but it's just. Well, I do know for sure that some of them don't. Like, it's just because it's just flat out fucking obvious. Like, is it a possibility that Rob Halford actually on his own time does sit there and listen to fucking uh, metal? I mean, I guess it's possible. I just find it highly unlikely. Because what do you have on his list? I'm going to use back. I think he had, like, I think he even put, like, Emperor on there. I'm just like, dude, I would be absolutely shocked if you listen to fucking Emperor on your own fucking time. Maybe he does. Again, I guess it's possible. But I highly fucking doubt that. Uh, and when I say on your own time, that means he physically owns it. He owns a CD or a record. And when he's in the car driving to his fucking Walmart, fuck yeah, it's grocery shopping time on his own time. Nobody else in there to impress. That's what he's listening to. Not, hey, I got a party and I got to impress my buds. Not, hey, I got to put on an act because people are around. No, 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 no. When you're all by yourself, there's nobody watching, nobody listening, nobody else around. What are you actually listening to? Um, again, maybe he does. I doubt it. But as far as people that actually are into it, I mean, like like I said, I keep referring to them, the guys in Cyanide. Them, I, the reason I refer to them a lot, because I know they are, and the reason I know they are, because they order from us. So I, that's why I know. Um, uh, Don from Nunslaw, I know, still really likes metal. He doesn't collect records no more. He's uh, kind of like world travel in a sense, so he didn't want anything on hand. So I know he sold off his metal collection shit, but I know he still uh, checks shit out online and stuff and all that. And uh, he's a very knowledgeable source from basically anything from... 1990 down, especially demos and shit. Um, very, very well knowledgeable on that. Uh, and I know he definitely, on his own time, legitimately listens to the fucking metal. I know that for a fact. Um, I get the vibe the guys in Cannibal do. I think somebody said in the comments of one of them that they, they listen to country or something outside. Corpse Gunner admittedly admitted, like after shows. I, I, I don't I don't doubt that. And again, listening to other stuff is, is fine. I understand like guys like classic rock and stuff, especially they're older. I, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not knocking that. I'm saying the some of these guys, like, I just, I, I guarantee they're, they're rarely listening to it. Like, at, like, at best, they're listening to it once a year. I, when they're, well, again, when they're alone, not fucking impressing their buds. Um, so, but I kind of get the vibe, at least, you know, Corpse Grinder and Alex Webster, they listen to metal at least once a month. You know what I mean? Like, real metal. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. But um, I get the vibe that they still do. Other bands, uh, who do I think still generally the metal? Uh, I think, uh, Matt Harvey from Exhumed is, I know he does, uh, he's, he's point blank told me that he listens to like classic rock and shit like that. And just like outside of a show, the last thing he wants to listen to is blasting death metal. But I know for a fact, he's still really passionate about, you know, like repulsion, cryptic slaughter, uh, his fair bands, you know, Exodus and, um, Carcass. And, um, I know there's some newer bands that he does. Uh, him, him and I were talking about entrails at Maryland death fest. He said he really liked them. I was kind of surprised he's a fucking newer band. So I know he definitely does, uh, still like metal. So him. Uh, and I'm sure there's tons others. I just think that uh, I just bring it up because, like, especially maybe some of the younger bucks watching might be super surprised, as I was as a teenager when I found out, oh, man, some of these guys, like, but the, you figure, oh, they're the, one of the biggest death metal bands ever. Or they're one of the biggest metal bands ever. Like, who, like for example, maybe if you're totally fucking naive, let's say, like, but let's say you grew up in the 80s, right? And you're listening to fucking whatever. You listen to Possessed, Death, Massacre, you know, Exodus, Slayer, Merciful Fate, Venom, all that, but you also like Black Sabbath, right? But you're still, let's say you're about 14 years old, you're young to it, you're liking those. Yeah, you also like Black Sabbath. Did you at that time think, you know, Ozzy Osbourne or Geezer Butler, those guys, were you thinking, yeah, you know, they fucking like, you know, they like death, they're checking out the new Possessed. I mean, did you have any thoughts of that? Maybe if I grew up then, I would have thought that, I'm like, oh, you know, Black Sabbath, you know, first metal band, classic fucking metal band, of course Ozzy likes metal. No, but he doesn't, you know, it's kind of the same fucking thing, you know what I mean? Uh, but a with with obviously less notable bands, but on a bigger scale in death metal, to where it's like they're all they just yeah they're just, yeah they're just I listen to it. So it is what it is. <laughs> From abhorrent spawn six six six, got a few questions for you, Jada. That's what I'm here for. Do you have any favorite exercises to do in the gym? I know a lot of people really like the feeling of getting a bicep pump. Also, do you have any favorite tunes to jam while? you're hitting the weights and what are some of your favorite bands slash albums that came out of texas keep making cool videos god damn it um favorite bands out of texas um necrovore i really like them um devourment molesting decapitated really like that 
Um, Texas, Texas, Infernal Dominion, the first record. I think the only record they did. That was a good. That was a good album. Uh, who else? Oh, Rigor Mortis. I'm fucking Rigor Mortis. I love fucking. That'd probably be my favorite, actually. First Rigor Mortis album, self-titled. Um, Johnson Blanks, but that's all Texas. That's the first thing that's come to mind. Uh, uh, what do I listen to at the gym? Uh, just across the board. You know, uh, all different stuff. Uh, stuff. Uh, Misfits, Deicide, um, some Cannibal. Not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily like if I, I probably don't listen to too many demos and shit like that. More stuff that's like really easy to hear. You know what I mean? That's kind of polished. Um, just because it might be a little muddy with my headphones or whatever, and it's you know, but nothing kind of what you'd expect. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary that would be like you'd be shocked by or anything like that. Just whatever, it's basically whatever I'm looking for. You know, it's kind of like in when I listen to if I'm in the car, like what 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 album am I going to pick or whatever. Just you know, whatever I'm kind of feeling, just going through. It's kind of the same thing. And any favorite exercise to do in the gym? Uh, I don't know if I have favorites. I I do ones that I think are most beneficial to my goals. So for example, if you're trying to like build you're really trying to build your quads, for example. I think the best quad builder for overall legs, quads and hams, but primarily quads, is uh, the hack squat machine. The hack on a sled where the uh, pads are on your shoulder and your your feet are out in front of you, slightly out in front of you, and you're on an actual sled. You can bring an ass to your fucking calves. Uh, I think that's the best quad movement that you can fucking do. So I do that. That's not because it's my favorite exercise to do. I mean, uh, it's hard as fuck, especially if you're going heavy and especially if you're going... Uh, Higher reps. I mean, it's 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 a very very hard movement to do. Uh, I will say this is a tip. Uh, if you're going to do this, a little tip and trick that a lot of people never find out, especially at the uh, you just I've never at the gym. People always recommend they're like, oh fuck. So you'll find out if you do don't do it first at, at your leg day. Do it uh, as your second, minimally your second uh, compound exercise. Otherwise, it's going to just your knees are going to be fucking killing you. But man, this really fucking hurts your knees. So either do a, a regular squat first, a Smith's machine squat first, some type of machine squat first. Or do the leg press first. Even if you do leg extensions and leg curls, which I do those prior as well, uh, those won't be sufficient. You have to do another compress, I mean, a comp compound movement type of press where you're pressing with your legs, like I just said, before going to this. Because for whatever reason it is, uh, it just, it, it'll desecrate your knees. Even if you'll just have, even if you're on your later set, but like me, one plate aside is, is fairly fucking light on that. I mean, the, the ours, uh, the hex squat we have in my gym, too, is a really heavy one. And the frame itself is already 105 pounds. So even when you put one plate on there, you're like, oh, shit, this is heavier than I thought it would be. Like, I remember when they first got it. But, like, that's my favorite quad movement because I think that's – a lot of people will say, oh, barbell squats, freeway barbell squats. This is the best leg uh, build, quad builder, the best overall development for legs. I highly, highly disagree with that based on just a biomechanics just perspective, based on – what I've heard very educated people say in the breakdown and based on what I've seen from personal experience on myself and, uh, other, um, other body builds really bring up their legs. Um, definitely no usually half squats blow them away as far as leg development. Now I will say this as far as an overall body exercise, you're trying to get worth the most muscle groups to get the most like calorie burnish like that. Yeah. Freeway squats are totally superior. Or if you're going to be, if you're a football player, you need to build overall strength and stability. I would never put them on a half squat. I'd put them on a fucking, I put them on a barbell squat. Or if their goal is to be a power lifter, I'd put them on a fucking uh, free bar squat. And if their goal is to be a, a anything, any strength and conditioning for like sports or whatever, or just anything, just strength and conditioning, yeah, I would put them on a free bar squat because they're using more of their body. They're using the lower back. They're using their glutes. Um, that's what they're using. That's not the thing. Like what I noticed, why when I pull, I actually don't even do free weight barbell squats anymore because what I noticed was my legs were like slightly tender. The thing that would be always sore the next couple of days is my my ass and my low back, and my ass grew the most. I'm like, well, I'm not trying to get an, an enormous fucking ass. I was, I want big ass fucking legs. And then you switch over, bam, fucking all that's sore as fuck is my goddamn quads. Dude. They're pumped as fuck when doing them, and uh, sore as a motherfucker. And it really gets around the fucking kneecap too, because when you go deep in that extra stretch, it's kind of another reason why you want to be fucking like in a sense warmed up with other exercise prior. I think that's why it hurts the knees, just a lot of that deep strain with the IT band and just all that connective tissue. It's kind of an awkward movement. So, but if you do it, like I said, as your second exercise, pressing exercise, or at the end, I do it at the very end personally now. Um, so I have like two two pressing movements prior to it, and then that. So my knees they just it close like butter. And just like with anything else, like uh, for like if it's a bicep movement, like I don't just go in there like I'm going to train biceps because I want to train biceps. Like matter of fact, I, I don't even like training arms. I think it's actually boring as fuck because it's just kind of like just isolation movements kind of boring, but I do do it because I believe it builds 
bigger, fucking more fuller 3D arms, which mine definitely have coming. Again, you can't tell in these fucking videos, but um, it's definitely put like my tricep. You, know, you can't tell in these videos. You can't see shit in these videos. Like, 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 like press downs and shit like that, like rope press downs and shit, and really concentrating, like putting your back to the fucking machine and stuff like that have really brought out like my outer head. Like, you can't really tell. It's like really brought out like outer head development and shit like that. So certain like I don't do them because I, I like how it feels or I think it's cool. I do it because I'm trying to bring up that body plan. Make sense? So I just know the exercises that are best for on a scientific level, like just doing your research and studying it. And also, more importantly, in my opinion, is is uh, uh, personal experience, learning your body, see how it reacts. Like, for example, I give you the best way Vince Gironda used to do this, uh, what, basically the first guru in bodybuilding. He didn't just take words from people like read a book or watch a video or whatever. Like this exercise works this, the way he would do it. Let's say you're trying to fucking work. Let's go with, yeah, for example, let's go with uh, outer, 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 tri your outer tricep head, which is this outer head here. You have your, inner, your outer head, then you have your inner head. And let's say you're trying, your goal is I want to get that built, that I'm going to build up that outer head. I want to, what exercise does the best for this? Well, here's how, how you figure it out. This is what Vince would do back in the day, rather than just ask people. He'd go to the gym and let's say, because what yeah, you can go around and you ask, What's the what's the best oh, what's the best exercise for outer head outer tricep head? Be able to like you know rope push downs. Hey, rope push downs. Yep, rope push downs. That's what they ever says. That's that's just what everybody assumes. What he would go and do is literally go in the gym and do like ten to twenty sets of rope push downs, heavy weight, medium weight, high rep, drop sets, everything, nothing but rope push downs, and then just go the fuck home. Then what he would do? Wait one or two days. Where are you sore at? Are you sore in the outer head? Are you sore in the inner head? You sore right around this, this, the fucking elbow. You sore up into your fucking belt. Like, where are you sore at? And then, if it was just mainly the fucking outer head, you conclude, that's the exercise I'm going to use as my primary movement to build that area. Nobody fucking does that. And I kind of, I'm not going to say I went to that extreme and went there and just did 10 to 20 sets of one exercise figured out, but I would go by, I would gauge it. Where am I the most sore at of the exercise that I did? What exercise did I do? Where am I sore at? Okay, this area I'm trying to build up. Well, fuck, I kind of don't want that area bigger. I'm trying to build it here. So I would swap out the exercise and find out where I'm at and, and adjust them accordingly. So I just go by feel in that sense. Um, because, yeah, if you're sore, for example, if you're training biceps and, like, the next day your fucking front delt sore, well, A, you could be doing the goddamn uh, exercise fucking wrong or going too goddamn heavy. Well, B, it might be an exercise that's working that way. Or let's say your biceps aren't sore at all, but you just got a lot of tendonitis and, you know, aching in your forearms and uh, brachialis and shit like that. It could be like, it's not that suitable for you. Maybe you, instead of doing like a barbell curl, maybe you need to do like a preacher curl, or maybe you need to go on like a cable where the tension's constantly on it, and you could like more squeeze and shit like that. You may just be working a bunch of connective tissue shit. Maybe it's just not suitable for your um, for your body. You know what I mean? So yeah, no favorite exercise in the sense. I have favorites that I do because I found out these are what work best for me and my goals. So I hope, hope that kind of answers your question. <laughs> Ooh, got another long, long here. Uh, sweet, uh, Steve Damien. Thanks for your videos, bro. I started my own living room label just for myself. Registered a name, GST number Canada. Oh, sounds like he's up in Canada. Just to be able to put my CD out there. It's the only way otherwise no stores will take your product. Oh, okay. Which with a registered label, you can ask any local stores and sometimes even the big guys to put your CDs on the shelves. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's even like, okay. Because things are a little different up there as far as things go. Uh, selling your albums through your website, then someday some professional labels might notice you, then the serious business might start money. Sky's the limit, only a human brain set up limits. Pretty much, yeah. So kind of you just commenting on my uh, on the video. Well, not really a question. Uh, from Jay Dinkins. Every goddamn video. Fuck, I'm loving it. Question. This question is not only for J-Dog, but all the commenters. What are you listening to a lot of currently? Myself, I've been on a big incantation, immolation, and demolition hammer kick with some Gigi Allen, DSI, and the Exploited sprinkled in. I listen to so many bands that I tend to jam out to certain things, and then it gradually changes over time. What, wondering if others consume their music this way or try to change up band styles often. I love metal, but death metal is my favorite subgenre. But yeah, death metal is my favorite too. Um, as far as what I've been recently listening, to, I mean, there's nothing like that's on like a like a regular spin list. Like, hey, I'm going to listen to this for a week straight. Uh, I'll just go back this week. What did I listen to this week? Um, 
I listened to uh, The Crown, The Burning Album this week. I listened to Cannibal Corpse, The Wretched Spawn this week. I listened to Demonical Hellsworn this week. I listened to uh, Immolation, uh, Kingdom of Conspiracy this week. I listened to... Uh, Trying to think, uh, what the fuck else did I listen to over this week? I don't know, those are the ones that come to my mind, but th those I definitely listened to in the last four days or so. Oh, I listened to uh, Disavowed, Perceptive Deception. Uh, love that record. Uh, check that, guys. That was a brutal death metal from 2000 or so from the Netherlands. Uh, that's the only album I liked after that. I, I thought they were just banned for years. I listened to, I've heard the, the second album, whatever, came in through hells. I'm like, eh, it's okay. First album, Perceptive Deception. Fucking love it, especially. This first song, Rhizome, and the third song, Reason Rejected. I fucking love those songs, man. It's like suffocation on fucking, fucking smoke and meth. And it's like the production, some might consider it maybe like a little bit like, I guess like overproduced in a sense, but it's like, I, I like how it came out. Like the vocals are like really, it's like Frank Mullen almost in like a fucking, fucking washer and dryer. I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like echoing. I, I love how it came out. Yeah, I love the record, the blast sound and how it sounds. Awesome, album, especially those two songs. Uh, so I listened. That's I just listened to all that shit this week. Oh, I listened to uh, Nutslaughter and Jog Dread as well this week. Um, yeah, I, I, all those I literally listened to in the last since I'm recording this on a Saturday. So from today to um, yeah, Monday, I, I definitely listened to those. I think a few others too, but that was, I definitely listened to those all those records this week. So, oh, I listened to a fucking uh, DSI live bootleg CD. Hell's just got in too. Thought it was pretty cool. It was live in 2021. Anything Dia said, you know I'm going to check it out. I picked up the disc, too. I don't know who did it. You got these Digipack CDs, and I don't know the label, what it's called. I just saw them on the cart that it was checked in. Our receiving department got it done. She rolled it out, and uh, I was like, fuck, Dia what the fuck is this? I put it out. It sounds pretty goddamn good. So I'm definitely going to buy one of these. Dia Live 2021 in, like, Florida or something. After the pandemic, Glenn says it's pretty funny shit. And uh, anything by Dia I automatically listen to. That gets automatically listened to. And uh, and you know how I love bootlegs. So I'm like, fuck, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm picking this up. So I listen to that as well. From Lance Conant. Hey, J-Dog, just wondering why H why Hells doesn't carry 2XL on any of the old school band uh, tees. Pretty sure I already answered this question a couple times, you man. Um, well, we do, and it's just whatever we can get. You know what I mean? It's whatever the suppliers have. So if somebody prints them, we get them. They don't have them, we don't have them. You know I mean? I can't, like, hold a gun to their head and tell them to make, you know, to do them. Because we're not the ones that do them. You know what I mean? Like, we can only control the stuff that we release. For example, if, like, Metal Blade Records does the new Cannibal Corpse album, and I'm like, hey, assholes, like, where's our splatter vinyl? They didn't press the splatter vinyl. It's kind of like, I can't, like, I can't make them press the splatter vinyl, right? It's like, they press, oh, we only press black vinyl. Like, well, I guess we're only getting black vinyl. So, like, why aren't you getting splatter vinyl? Because they didn't press any. So, it's kind of the answer there. Shanks. Hails from India, j Dog. India, holy fuck. Love the channel and the rants and thoughts. Cool, thanks, bro. Uh, question, any plans of HH expanding to Asia? We we here find it so difficult to get physical media, whether it be vinyl or CD. Trying to get music from across the world absolutely kills us when it comes to shipping. So any plans of extending the dog hands close to us over here? Thanks. Uh, yeah, first off, man, India speaks some pretty damn good English. So, you know, cool there, man. Um, no, I mean, no plans to. Um, just because uh, we... We have talking about doing some, like, kind of having an operation run out of uh, Europe. Chase is throwing it around. I don't know, man. We'll see. I mean, it's hard enough to get fucking people, like, it's kind of like, you got to remember, like, if you're, because if I'm not over there, or none of us are over there, who do you trust? You know, you're going to send, you know, literally thousands of dollars worth of merchandise to people you've never met, some strangers, and hope they manage it right, do it properly to your expectations. They're not ripping you off. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, it, it sounds awesome in theory, and, and I'm sure there's a way to do it. It's just, um, it's hard enough to fucking find people just in our own, like, I go to the warehouse literally every day. It's hard enough to find people to trust for that. You know what I mean? Like, who I want there by themselves or or just, just, just around in general, right? It's hard enough to find that. So, not a bad idea. In fact, it's actually a damn good idea. It's just, uh, you know, the trust factor. From Lake. It's just, just Lake. Hey, Jay, in 2016, there was an event in Ohio, Hell's Head Bash. I'm not 
if you guys hosted it, but if you did, I am just wondering about your experience with the band Graham Bolowski. Now, it's funny, it's like the second or third guy, they're asking, like, did Hell, Hell's Headbangers put on uh, Hell's Head Bash, or was that you guys? You feel like? I thought it was just common knowledge. Not that I'm dogging you or anything here, Lake. I'm just, I literally, I, just, I thought, like, that was just a known thing. I, I, it's, that's kind of interesting, funny that, that people didn't know or they're kind of confused by that. Uh, but, you know, whatever. I guess that's what I'm here for is to answer the question. Uh, my experiences with GBK, um, they really had much of an experience. They they set up uh, their, um, I guess, distro or stand or whatever right next to the Hell's um, the Hell's booth. So they were selling whatever merchandise. They did shirts and some LPs or whatever. So I was that's kind of my interaction as one or two of the guys from there was from there. I think I said hello or whatever. That was about it. It was kind of cool seeing them. I'm not the biggest GBK fan. I really do like uh, Mocking the Philanthropist uh, album. Judo Beast and some was like, eh. And was it the kosher rod? I didn't really like that shit. Uh, but I think Mocking the Philanthropist, Philanthropist is a really good album. Definitely a big fan. Um, I mean, I didn't really have much interest to talk to the guys. I mean, I hear they're like big time racist and shit. I, I don't like to throw that card around because I don't know if that's true or not. I heard that they are and that they're, that they're proud of it. I'm one of those people like, I don't care if you are or aren't. You're allowed to like who you want to like and not like who you like. I'm not one of those people like, it's going to cancel you or whatever. Like who you don't. I don't give a shit. But I don't know. If you're like, if you're like this white power shit and stuff like that, I'm. Chances are we ain't got nothing in common. I, I usually like anyone I met who's like some big Nazi white power and stuff. They're they're usually a bunch of ignorant dumbasses. I mean, if you automatically like, again, I, I hate this PC world. Like, if you sell you like a joke, you tell a black joke or something. Oh my god, you're racist. Or if you say something, 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 you're a racist. Like, no, no, racist means you literally dislike somebody automatically under any circumstances just because the color of their skin. And if that's the case, you're probably a not a good person and just honestly pretty fucking stupid so it's like if that's the case and you're admitting like a, a part of that it's kind of like well that's cool you're, it's free free to do i think you, you absolutely have the right to do that i don't think you should be canceled i don't think you should be crucified but chances are i probably don't want to talk to you so that's kind of my thoughts on it again i don't even know for sure if that's the case with them but I, that's what i've heard so if it if it's not sorry uh if it is the case well here's your answer that's how my thoughts on it uh, for Balorex, what's with Australian bands and Hell's Headbangers would be, uh, Hell's Headbangers would be close to 15 bands that have had releases through the label more support than, en than any Aussie label does for our scene. What is happening with the Best of Warlust vinyl reissues? They are on the, uh, coming up on the website, but no longer there. Keep up the good work with the vids. Love you, honest, no bullshit answers. Glad you like the no bullshit answers, bro, because I'm going to give you another bull no bullshit answer. Uh, not 100% sure what's going on with Beast of Warless. It's more of a chase question. Uh, I imagine it's just because the plant turnaround times are absolute dog shit. Literally, like, you submit a vinyl right now, it's a year turnaround time minimum with the plant. Like, literally one year. It's absolutely fucking insane because of, I guess, because of the fucking wimp vid and all this other shit. I don't know what the fuck that has to do with pressing records, but nonetheless, that's the, that's the case. Um... As far as uh, the, the the bunch of bands in Australia, that's also kind of a chase thing too. Uh, for a while there, it just seemed like he was on a, a Aussie hype. Uh, I like a lot of that shit. Like I mean, I love Sure 666. Uh, the last record they put out, eh, it was okay. Um, didn't think it sucked. It's just yeah. Um, but Terra Brox is down. I love all that shit for sure. And then was it Call the Wild EP, EP that was before the album? It was it was okay. So yeah, but Terra Brox is down. Big big fan. Um, likes Gospel of the Horns a lot. Um, and though, yeah, so, we, but all the other bands we did, like, you know, Shackles, Denouncement Pyre, Destructor, Abominator, Beast of War Lost, like you said, um, and whoever the fuck else I forget, Grenade back in the day, done tons of bands. I mean, most of the shit I'm a fan of, too. Some of them just kind of like, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's Aussie metal. Uh, Chase was on a big hype. I mean, it's because it's all like, you know, they kind of like, over there, they have more like the underground spirit, you know what I'm saying? Like the kind of an 80s look. It really fits the label. It's solid metal. They want to, um, they want to label do its, their stuff, and you know it's kind of easy to get into metal, in my opinion, because it's kind of like if you're a black metal fan, you probably like it. If you're a death metal fan, you probably like it. If you're a thrash metal fan, there's even still a chance you like it. So it's kind of like you know metalists across the board. Um, there wasn't no fucking uh, egos like the the Cleveland band. I told you, hey, we want ten thousand dollars type shit. None of that. It was pretty simple deals. Like you know, if they wanted cash, it was something within fucking reason. Um, or it was just a copy, like set up 15% copies, you know, so easy to work with too. You know what I mean? And, uh, I, all every Australian I've ever met in my life, 
whether been in the metal scene or bodybuilding world, like for example, Lee Priest, a bodybuilder, I met him in the airport and the at the fucking Olympia. Um <clears throat> just always super fucking cool people. The guys in Destructor, Glenn and them, they played uh our fest. I was I kind of hung out with them for a while, just just hanging out, talking to just really, really cool, nice people. So easy to work with too. So, you know, stars kind of all align. Um, you know, another another reason I I can bring it up every now and I do all the time as, as much as I can because nobody ever talks about. It. One of my favorite uh, albums out of Australia of all time is Atomizer, The Only Weapon of Choice. Check that out if you guys haven't. I uh, fucking love that record. And we did work with Atomizer, too. We didn't put that album out. That was the one right before kind of we started working with them when, when that album was out. But I'm a huge fan of that record. Uh, don't know it? Check it out. Uh, Metal Musician 696. Ha, ha, ha. Maybe one day Hell's Headbangers and Perdition Temple will hit the strip club. Maybe, never know. Doubtful, but <laughs> I guess we'll see. Uh, Lorian, the epic one, 12. Comments all the time as well. Can't wait for the day a douche tuber finds J Dog's channel and tries to expose him as an elitist. Uh, yeah, I would actually look forward to that too, because I mean, I, I don't know. Would somebody consider me an elitist? I don't even, I, I consider myself pretty laid back. I'm pretty open to like most shit. I just, I'm just honest about what I like. And what I don't, but I'm not like I, I don't like that elitist shit. All that like that uh, fucking like elite black metal, and like I listen to black metal only, and uh, uh, I don't like anything that's that's that, that is recorded in a studio. It's like give me a fucking break, dude. Yes, you do. You're you're literally forcing yourself to try to be like. So that's another thing I know about me is what I, for me, I guess why I'm so passionate about death metal and stuff like that is I don't. I'm not trying to like it. Like. I immediately liked it when I first heard it. Like the growling vocals, the down two guitars, the blasting beats. It's literally what I, that's the style of music I want to hear. That's what I've always wanted to hear. So that's kid, it, it appealed to me right away. It wasn't because it's saying about like gore and death and evil shit like that. That's what's so appealing. Because for example, like I've said it many times, I'm not like some big horror movie fan. Like it's not like it's everything's got to be gory and shit like that. And I'm into that. I just naturally liked this heavier kind of like aggressive dark music. That's just literally what I liked. I'm not trying to like set a standard. Like I'm so underground, I'm only gonna like this because that, and I can't like anything outside of that. No, I'm not like that at all. Like that's the elitist shit. Like I only listen to Brazilian black model or whatever. It's just that this shit's fucking retarded because you're you're literally just trying to do that to be some elitist. Like you don't your brain and your psychology and your and your um, eardrums. You don't. That's not the actual truth. You're forcing yourself to do that. And how long is that gonna last? You're gonna die off because te technically, you're kind of being a poser in a sense. You're trying to fit in to do something, so I guess a, a few people will reply to what he said too. Uh, Jay Deacons did, who replies and everything. I love how those kind of people act like they're non conformists but liking a bunch of trash but want to conform you to their way of thinking. They're usually a bunch of pretentious art school graduates that like to stroke their own ego about the how diverse their musical tastes are while hating on everyone that doesn't think like them. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I just like, um, I don't know if I've known too many people in person. I just, it just felt like the, the vibe I got, and I've always said this, the elitist, the people like, it seemed like a lot of the guys, I don't follow at all. It's just, it was actually more kind of Reaper, some Chase too. They would tell me comments. It seemed like the guys, I'm talking 10 years past, maybe, maybe it's still the same, I don't know. The guys on the uh, Nuclear War Now message board. The people that were coming on it, I got the vibe that they're more elitist. Like, they'll rip on, like, Morbid Angel, that's trendy shit. I'm not saying they say this. I don't remember the comments, and I'm not saying that, that they are elitist. I'm just saying that's the vibe I got. I got that it was more so as those guys. Like, it's just, it's raw fucking black metal, nothing else. It's fucking sarcophago, blasphemy, beheret, and nothing else. Like, again, not saying they say that, not saying they think that, not, not saying any of that. I'm just, that's the vibe I got. And, uh, and if that's the case, it just, to me, that's just fucking ridiculous. And then lastly was uh, Donald Candy said, yeah, fuck those people. You like what you like. That's that's my mindset. That's how you, if I like it, I like it. I don't really fucking care. I just like, I don't try not to like when we talk about all those shitty bands, Slipknot, Corn, and all that other crap. The reason I keep bringing those bands up, guys, because that's the shit I know that's trendy. I don't know stuff from 2022. The only reason I know about that crap is because kids wore it in high school. That's when I was in high school. So kept people like, Jada, why do you bring that up? Nobody even fucking follows that shit anymore. They follow fucking... Essence of Light or whatever the hell is out now. I, I don't. I never heard of it. I'm not in high school anymore, and I don't have social media. I don't pay attention to what the mainstream does. I literally have zero clue what the fuck's out there. I remember from high school because I thought it was annoying then, so I keep referring to those bands because that's what the fuck they listen to. Um, I don't try not to like those bands. I don't try not to like fucking rap. I don't try not to like country. I just don't. You know what I mean? I listen to them just like, 
this doesn't do anything for me. Like I'm, I, I, I just don't enjoy this. You know what I mean? It's kind of like if you eat a piece of food or something. You don't like try to force yourself to like a certain pizza place, right? You either like it, like, oh, well, this is really tasty. Or you're like, this tastes like shit. That's how I am with the, the tunes that I like. I just so happen to really like Sinister. I so happen to like fucking Cannibal. That's what I like, fucking like. So I, there's no elitist or conformist you know, about it. That's just who the fuck I am. Take it or leave it. So, yeah, but ho hopefully they come one day. We can have a fucking, could all have a field day on them in the fucking comments, right? You guys can have a field day on the comments and I'll read them off for a laugh, just like we did on uh, 216, right? So keep that going. So, yeah, guys, leave more in the comments. Any other questions, respond to this. Say whatever the fuck you want, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.